Hey, it's Mark Podolsky of The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, I'm so excited because this is always one of the most popular of all the podcasts we do when we take somebody who has gone through our training, and in this case, it's flight school, and listen to their journey because they're just a little bit further ahead than you. And then we're going to get to pull back the curtain a bit on how they've been able to go from where they started to where they are today. And today's superstar, I like to call her the silent assassin, is Stephanie Dean. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you so much, Mark. It's wonderful to be here. Such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Stephanie. So how did you find Land Geek? Well, I swiped right on a book on my vacation when I was uh, just reading my Kindle and I finished the book that I was in on vacation and it said other books you may like and yours popped up. So I read Dirt Rich and I thought, interesting. And then I read three more books about buying dirt and they didn't interest me as much. So I went back and read yours again and then I bought the toolkit. So it was just it was just a, really an accident that I fell into and I feel so, so grateful because it's really changed my life. That's incredible. Okay, so you start with the toolkit, and then mm -hmm. you went you, to flight school. You went to yeah. flight school. So how long? Yeah. What was the gap between going from the toolkit okay. to flight school? So I actually went back to my journal this morning, getting ready for this conversation, and I read the book in August. I read several more books in August. Came back in September, and on September 11th, I bought the toolkit, and then I told my husband, "I want to do this. I really want to do this, and I really want to get out of corporate." And he said, "Well." okay, okay, go to flight school, don't quit your job. And I was <laughs> like, well, no promises. So I went to flight school, I signed up for it on October 25th. And I wrote in my journal, I uh, set my stretch goal to be out of my corporate job by March 1st. And that was on October 25th before I started flight school before I bought any properties before I'd sold any properties. And then I started flight school on November 2nd. And I wrote in my journal after that evening, I said, I declare my intention to be out of my corporate job by March 1st. So oh, I started wow. flight school. I doubled down. Stephanie, I that's, actually... really, that's really fast, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I know it was crazy fast, but I just knew, I felt really like I was in flow. The whole time yeah. I felt so connected to the choice. I felt so connected to the learning and the materials that were offered. I felt like you just offered the exact plan for what I knew, I could bring all the skills that I've had over my lifetime to, to bear in one place and make a success out of it. So I actually said to myself, I'm not going to give myself permission to fail. I'm going to take the leap and I'm going to go for it and I'm not going to look back. And I did, in fact, graduate both flight school and from my corporate job on March 1st. No way. Stephanie, I have the, I have the chills. We're, I have to send you the yeah. retired hat. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So yeah. what, what was your corporate job? I mean, can you, I mean, yeah. can you talk a so little bit about chain. it? Yeah, yeah. I worked at Clorox at the Clorox company okay. and I was a supply chain analytics manager and I'd been in supply chain for 30 plus years at different companies, seven years with Clorox. I was teaching actually people how to do analytics. So I, I believe, and I recently did a podcast on that and there's a funny story around that, but um, I did a podcast on analytics for everybody, and uh, that was what I did. I taught analytics to people uh, as a course. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. so what about the land model resonated mm -hmm. with you coming from, you know, a really robust corporate background? I love the independence. I want to travel. I want to travel not just a little bit, not just for a vacation every couple of weeks a year, but I want to travel full time. And my husband and I have been dreaming about this for years. We have actually binge watched the international travel show for uh, probably eight years uh, in terms of the international house owners. And we study places and we go places and we go do we do a big trip every year these days. We didn't at first, but now we really want to just be able to go all the time. And I wanted something that I could take with me. So I liked that. I was a big Robert Kiyosaki guy back in the, or person back in the, um, you know, late nineties, I guess my husband and I were really into investing in land and uh, in real estate. And then our children were born about, well, 20 years ago, because my oldest is 20 this month. And we just didn't have the time to deal with all that. I, I know you talk about that all the time, but you understand that it's just, it's very time consuming and very capital intensive, honestly. Yeah. So I've been kind of looking for the right 
you know, passive income stream um, my whole life, I feel like. And this finally clicked. And I just said, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Wow. Okay. So, you know, like, I don't even know where to start, but like, t- t- <laughs> tell me like, all right, you're, you're in flight school, you're going through the modules. Yeah. How long before you, you bought your first piece of property? But, and then I'm going to ask you like about your husband too. Like, was it, cause you know, flight school is an investment. And then it's like, yeah. not only that, but then it's like, okay, yeah. I'm going to quit my job and do this. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you remember he said, don't quit your job. <laughs> he was I was really emphatic about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually bought my first property on a land orb on the 23rd of October. So it was two days before I signed up for flight school. Okay. And I, so I, I went in saying, okay, I got something. And I was only paying, you know, $150 for two properties that I bought together uh, per month. And I thought, okay, I'm in, I'm, I'm doing this. And then over time, uh, I think it was, so I've actually got my numbers in front of me. That's why I'm looking to the right. Um, sure. I bought four properties together in a bundle wholesale. And that was on November 9th. So my second week of flight school. And so I continued to buy for, you know, the first three months, I was really only buying and I bought one, two, six, nine, nine properties before the end of the year last year. Okay. And I hadn't sold anything at that point. Right. No, so okay, then, now you haven't sold anything. At what point anything. is your husband or, or are you saying, Hey, I don't know. Like we, you know, we got a lot of property here. Yeah. Was well, there any know, anxiety? <laughs> um, for him a little, Yes. He was actually laid off in the end of November from Clorox. We both worked at the Clorox company and he was laid off and his mother passed uh, in December. So we were just having a ton of change all happening at once. She'd been living with us for the last eight and a half years. And so here I am over here like celebrating and I'm just in my, you know, I found my calling moment and he's over there going, wait, wait, I'm not ready for this yet. But he was so supportive because he knew that this was something that I wanted to do. And we've saved and we've done you know, a lot of the right things financially throughout our, our, our careers and our lifetime. And it was just at the point where I was really, really yearning for something deeply different. And I finally just said, I have to make the change. And he said, OK, he said, I'm going to try to keep working. I'm going to keep trying to find another job until we make the change. Well, when he was released from his uh, layoff severance period in April, he joined the business with me full time and he has never looked back. He loves it. So he, he loves buys it. for us. He's the acquisition manager and I'm the sales manager. So we, you know, when we have, we have a VA that helps us with the marketing and she's amazing. So we just kind of pieced it together. Um, there's more to that story, but you know, it, he's been very supportive all the way and the fear. So here's what I have to say about the fear. I had a number of people telling me across the last six months be careful. Just don't quit your job yet. Don't quit. Your, are you sure you want to quit your job? Please think about this before you take the sleep because you don't know if you're going to make enough to, to live on again. And I said, I do know. I said, and if I didn't know, I would figure it out because I believe in myself and I'm going to hire myself to do this work and to make it to make it work. And I said, if I would hire myself in a corporate job, I will hire myself in an entrepreneurial job. So I never really doubted there was time when I had to really sit down and look at the numbers and say, what is it going to take for me? And how long will it take me to get up to speed? And every time I set a milestone, I beat it. And so I kept saying to myself, okay, if this is real, show me a sale. Okay. There's a sale. There's three sales. Okay. If this is real, show me some passive income. By the time we got out of flight school, I had a thousand in passive income. And so it just, I kept asking and praying and meditating on it. And it just kept flowing in. And I was just say that, thank you. And let's keep going. You know, so I just kept on going. Wow. I love it. So, so he's the acquisition manager I'm, and you're in sales. I would think because you love analytics so much, you'd be the deal junkie analyzing yeah. the pricing and doing the pricing matrix and looking at the counties and, and keeping track of all the metrics, what's our uh-huh. response rate. How interesting. So he's so great. He's so great at it. I mean, he really loves it. And I knew he would. It matches his personality because he's an introvert and he's analytical. He loves to do the research. And so when when I first started talking to him about it, he said, well, let me just, you know, kind of go along with the trainings and figure it out. And he got to acquisitions and he pretty much stopped. Like he went through the whole toolkit, but then in the flight school, he went through the, the uh, acquisitions and he just stopped and started doing it. And he was amazing at it. He found deals. Like I showed him, 
the method that I had for every week, I would kind of search for some different deals between wholesale and mailings. And we pull all the levers and he just dove into it and just found some deals that I couldn't even find. So he's really amazing at it. And for me, I'm an introvert too, believe it or not. It doesn't feel that way sometimes, but I love to talk one-on-one and I hate to go to a crowd. Like parties are not my speed, but I love to talk one-on-one and I feel so connected to filling a purpose in helping people who want to sell their property have a path to sell it and helping people who want to buy a property have a path to buy it. And there are just some amazing stories from the buyers about what how their lives have changed because of the opportunity to buy land. So I it's so you. cool. Would you, would you mind sharing like, wow. sharing your favorite story? Yeah. Uh, my favorite story. Well, I've got a couple. I was trying to pick one before this call, and I, I've got a couple. So there was a guy who called me on a Saturday morning, and he said, I want to do this. And he called me at 8 a.m. Eastern time, which was 5 a.m. in his time in Phoenix. And he, I was like, okay, sure, I'll talk to you. It's eight o'clock my time. I'm fine. And so he was saying, yeah, I really want to do this. I'm going to work now, but I'm going to call my buddy. Do you have any more properties that are close together? And I just happened to have bought three adjoining properties. So the two of them bought three adjoining properties and they want to do sustainable farming. And they live together with their girlfriend and fiance on the property. And he talks to me all the time about how much he loves it. And I'm just like, that is amazing. So it's made me honestly fall in love with that area because of the stories that he's told me. And so now I can create stories around the area for other buyers to help them see the vision of creating this life of sustainable farming in a very small community. Um, Another one was that uh, a person needed a place to be safe. And so they just wanted to get off grid because they were feeling kind of persecuted where they were. And they just sure. wanted to go somewhere where nobody would bother them. And I said, you know what? You are safe with me. Sometimes people have different ways of, of showing up in terms of their um, identity. And that person has been such a, you know, a good payer. Like I've never really heard from him again, but he was so grateful just to have a chance to get, you know, a property of his own and just be able to live on the land. Um it, there are just, I can just carry on with stories. I can go on all day about that. But yeah, yeah. every these, single these person are, are great. Every single person has a story and that starts to feed my marketing because I use the stories to say, you know what? Everybody's got their own reason to buy land and you can be part of the story, you know? So it's just, it's really special. It's, it's, that's so, it's so nice. Do you, do you have a favorite deal that you've done? Uh, well, that one that I mentioned to the sustainable farming is probably one of my favorites. Um, okay. Just because how, it just how about, creates... how about n- numbers wise too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to brag about the numbers so much because no, no, I, I get uh, it. I get it. It's, it, it's yeah. It's kind of not the mission. It is the mission, but it's not the mission. You know no, a hundred percent. And it's so funny because we don't we don't really like the like land geek. You, we don't really brag about anything here because it, yeah. it's it's really that's not the point. Mm-hmm. the The point is freedom, and we want that yeah. passive income to exceed our fixed yes. expenses, so yes. we can work when we want, where we want, with whom we want. And so that's uh-huh. really what, what the focus is. And yeah. but I feel like if we don't share the numbers, people are skeptical or. Mm-hmm. You know, or if I share numbers, people are really skeptical. But like, if you share numbers, like, okay, you know, Mark is yeah. is not is not exaggerating when he says, yeah. you know, the the high yields and the, the high, you know, three hundred to a thousand percent return. Well, I I was actually listening to your podcast that you did with the other coaches, where you were talking about your you know your latest deal, and I was like, yeah, and you know, the the surprising thing is, I could hear those deals, and I could say, yes, I have many deals exactly like that. The, yeah. the ones where you buy low and you you end up making four or five, six times what you paid for it. So one of my favorite deals in that regard, my husband, uh, we have a great relationship. We've been married for 30 years this year, which is awesome. Okay, let's, um, let's, just, let's, just, friend. let's just sidebar. What is the secret? 30 years, secret you're your marriage? best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you got to invest in yourself. For, for instance, um, you know, we've raised two children. We've cared for his mother until she passed, which was almost a decade of active caregiving, but we take a month, we take a weekend off every month to go away and be by ourselves because at the end of the time, who's going to be left is us. So we have to make sure that, you know, we're going to raise our children. We're going to invest in them. We're going to invest in the people that need us, 
but we're going to make sure we invest in ourselves as well. So that's definitely the secret to our success. I love that. And I think the same thing can be said for business. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly be investing in yourself and Mm up-leveling your skills. Absolutely. And and never really feeling, uh, you know, you can't take any of it for granted, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. That Andy Grove book, the only the paranoid survive. And you yeah. just keep, you know, not to be paranoid, not yeah. to enjoy well, the journey. I'm not paranoid. No, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't but, drive that. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> not, not from an anxiety standpoint, but yeah. just that standpoint, like, you you know, never get complacent, essentially. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So anyway, he does acquisitions and I'm always listening, you know, because we're living in the same house, fortunately. I'm always listening yeah. to what he's buying. And he's telling me about this great property that he's got and he's just loving the location and it's got all the right stuff. It's like on a hill, it's close to a lake, it's just perfect. And he's getting it on eBay and he got it for $651 on an auction. And I ended up selling it before he closed the deal. And I've done this a few times and it kind of, you know, he's like, just wait. Just wait till I at least get the deed signed before you before you start selling it. And I had actually sold it before we paid the money, and it was for thirty uh, thirty seven hundred dollars. So we got it for six hundred fifty. We sold it for thirty seven hundred, and wow. that um, has actually happened a few times. Like yesterday, uh, just this weekend, I had a person who was calling me, and she wanted to pay cash for a property, and we did not have it sold yet. And so I said, well, I can't sell you that one on cash, but I can sell you terms next week. And she said, well, I want to go ahead and buy two. So I'm going to pay cash for this other one that you already have. And then I'll wait for the other one to clear. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's great. You know? that's fantastic. Sometimes, no, none of my properties really set for more than a couple of months. And that has been amazing um, that I have not had to you know, hold them for very long. Um, I will say that I've sold a few wholesale and I've set my intention, like I decided at one point that a certain part of the county was better than another part. So I wanted to get, you know, gravitate towards the faster turning part of the county. So sure. I said to myself, okay, before boot camp, I'm going to try to sell this slower turning part of the county and just just put the energy into it and just sell it. And by the time I got to boot camp, I had only two of those 10 properties left. So wow. my husband was saying, well, if you can sell in the desert, in the places where nobody knows how to go, then you can sell anywhere. And it kind of sets me in that frame of mind. No, it, it's, it's so true. And, uh, you know, I can just tell like, as you continue doing this, your confidence keeps growing. Yes. And so those mm-hmm. first few buys are, are you know, anxiety inducing, but mm-hmm. then once you've done it and you see, and you have proof of concept, it's like mm-hmm. sky's the limit and you, and you keep yep. going forward. So yep. what, what part of the business is the most challenging for you and which part of the business mm-hmm. do you absolutely love the most? Well, I surprised myself because I actually love selling the most and I did not think I would even be able to sell. I didn't think I could. Um, I love to turn up the knobs of learning on each part of the business. So we learned the whole thing all at once and then we went back and started to fine tune. So we went through the acquisitions and we had started learning, okay, you got to change the price. If you're not getting it, what you want from your mailings, you got to change the price. Don't be afraid of land art. Don't be afraid of DDs and taking, I mean, not DDs, but um, wholesale. Right. Taking the plunge is the hardest part. When you're in, sitting on the front side of this whole business and going, does it work? I got to just do a proof of concept. Taking the plunge is the hardest part, but I just say, go for it because you can't really fail when you're buying wholesale. The the people who are offering, I have not seen anybody who's offering wholesale at a full retail price. That means you've still got some room to grow and to gain and to resell, you know, at a price that you're not going to take a loss. And so that's that's a big plunge taker that I think is something people can overcome. Um, I have loved learning about marketing in the land sites, which I thought was really my hardest challenge because we just paid for several months in the land sites and had no leads. But we had such a good sales month last month in April that in May I said, okay, I'm gonna slow down a little bit on the Facebook boosting because I feel like I'm getting a little bit of addiction to that. And I'm gonna go learn how to really sell on the land sites. And so that was the challenge for me. But we got into land flip. I sent a note to the guy and said to to the support team and said, what works? I mean, what if my score is only 33 on my ads, what's going to get 100? And he sent me an example of 100. And I went, oh, now I see. And so we started really going down, you know, deeper on getting our ads up to a good quality ad that would 
offer real information to buyers. And we started selling. So I sold three in May on Landflip. And it's just like, you know, there's not a place that you can't overcome. So the final comment that I would say is I've got places to grow. And right now we're working on automation and we need to really start to think about how to off, you know, out, offsource our labor. So we know that we've got to grow outside of our team. We have a wonderful VA who helps us with marketing. And she's got a husband who does wonderful videos. And we love both of them. Um, but we need to expand into you know getting ourselves out of the business more. No, absolutely, and that's and that's really the the whole key because, you know, especially coming from a big company like Clorox, like the last thing I want you and your husband to do mm-hmm. is build another, another job, job for yourself. Because <laughs> yeah. even though you love it, at some point, if when you're traveling the world, you're mm-hmm. not you're not going to want to have to to talk to somebody, even absolutely, if, even if you love it. And so mm-hmm. to have that freedom is mm-hmm. is just so great. And it sounds like you're you're on your way. But you know, there's a big difference between delegating and abdicating. Like I love the right. fact that you're you're doing it yourselves, you're getting into the weeds, and then you're creating mm-hmm. the systems, the process, and you're attracting mm-hmm. great team members, especially yeah. on the marketing side of it, to mm-hmm. uh, to help you grow. So yeah, you know, kudos to well, you. Well, and I just could not be more complimentary of the whole toolkit and the flight school program that we've had so far. I mean, it has just been phenomenal in terms of teaching all the things that you need to know to get the meat and the bones on it, on the business. And then, you know, understanding the challenge of you've got to grow and push yourself to get out of the business. And I'm so ready for, for coaching. I, we're going to start that in the late summer and I can't wait to get started. Oh my gosh. We can't wait. And and you're our ideal coaching client uh, oh, because you've got everything set up and that we can help you scale and uh, and take it to the next level instead of you know working on fundamentals, in, yeah. In doing that, yeah. so that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm new, mm-hmm. and I'm listening to this podcast, and I'm 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 trying to decide, you know, should I take the leap? You know, I'm in I'm in a W two job. I want mm-hmm. to either retire my spouse. I want or or you know I want to do the Stephanie Dean way. I want to really accelerate very quickly or mm-hmm. I'm in real estate and I'm sick of the tenants and the termites and the trash. What would be your advice? Well, when I was leaving flight school, I you know announced that I've had these successes and I've also retired from my corporate job. And I was like, but don't quit your job. I don't, you know, this is not legal advice. This is not financial advice. So I'm not going to tell everybody to go quit their job, but I will say pull all the levers there are so many levers at each part of the business and you want to pull them all. You don't want to just say, well, I'm comfortable with wholesaling, but I'm not comfortable with land art. You don't want to say, well, I'm comfortable with wholesaling my property to get some money, but I'm not comfortable with going out and finding investors. You do everything. I mean, you got to do everything. And one of the big fast track moments that I had was that I did sign up with a premium account for Land VA for You. And they taught me how to see what the VAs do. So they taught me each of the three sections where the VAs are in acquisitions and marketing and sales. And um, and then they also taught me how to use some of the automations like follow-up boss and CRM and MailChimp and those things. And that was a phenomenal experience. And Pete and Anthony, I just want to give a shout out, have given great advice. And I ended up realizing that I needed to go build my own team. So I'm not still with them and I don't want to say anything negative, but to say that they were great for that period of time in my journey because they really helped me to fast track and upskill on top of flight school so that I just catapulted. Um, Now I realize that the challenge of me in the business is to continue that catapult in a way that's going to be sustainable so that I can continue to grow the business and scale and have my own team that I'm managing and and grow in a way that I want to grow my business. So those are some of the things that really work for me. Um, My biggest underscore is do every part of the recipe. The template works. I love the idea of franchising businesses. I've always been fascinated by that. And this is really capable of being a franchise. Um, so, you know, and then just slow yeah. down and- With, Without uh, the royalties. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for not charging royalties for all this wonderful knowledge that you're sharing. <laughs> but yeah. I just can't say enough good about it. Really, it's it's just been amazing. Wow. So how has life changed for you since starting the land yeah. business? 
well, my blood pressure is down 30 points. I want to start with that underscore. Um, wow. It has been tremendous. Um, I've had a lifelong chronic back pain, and I won't say that that's gone away, but I'm really enjoying not sitting at the desk all day. I sit at the desk usually for about two hours in the morning straight away. I'll get up and just kind of get my mojo going. And then we stop at 10 o'clock and we take our dog out for an hour and a half walk, which I could never do before. And we're doing it in the cool of the day instead of in the Georgia heat in the summer. And then we come back and I you know, start to um, work some more of the business. And then I'm flexible to do what I want to do. So I'm working right now. I'm working about five to six hours a day. I know that's going to go a lot lower. Um, but I'm also able to travel. So we've been able to take six trips in six weeks because of the opportunities to just take our business on the road or, or to just not even work the business at the times when we choose to just shut it down. Wow. I love so, it. Six trips in yeah. six weeks. What's, what's been your yeah. favorite trip? I love Well, to they're not all great. Yeah. I okay. love to travel too. So we're actually going to Peru in two weeks and we're going to go see Machu Picchu and oh, we're going to be there for three weeks. So I'm really so excited cool. about that. Yeah. That's awesome. Last weekend, my husband and I took a trip to a cabin just in North Georgia just to get our, an, an away weekend. And okay. then uh, we've had a couple of family trips. One of our relatives passed. And so we went to Lexington, Kentucky twice and um, went to see my parents and, you know, just little stuff like that. So we've just been able to flex with the needs of our business and our family together. Yeah. What do what do your parents think of all this? Like you're, you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> For 30 years, you're in corporate America. Now you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in, well, in, a, in a crazy land niche. To boot. Yeah. My parents are super supportive of me all the time, but my mom has said, I get those letters all the time and I just hate them. I just throw them in the trash. And I say, well, you know what, mom, you're not the right person to, to receive this letter. This is just not for you. So go ahead and throw it in the trash. That's fine. You right. know, to sell right. her land. So, yeah. um, you know, so she has just recently started to say, oh, you're doing well. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing great. And so, you know, it's just, uh, it's a different generation and a different time, but they're very supportive. Amazing. Well, Stephanie, I am yeah. so grateful that you took the time to share your experience, share your story. Uh, and I can't wait to to talk to you more uh, and your husband about how you you know continue to grow and evolve your land business. But now we're at that point in the right. podcast where your yeah. mentorship has been fantastic, but I'm going to ask you <laughs> your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Well, the book that really helped me to make my decision was called The Big Leap. I'm actually going to give you two tips of the week, if I may, but one, yeah. the big one is The Big Leap. So The Big Leap, Conquer Your Hidden Fear and Take Life to the Next Level is by Gay Hendricks. And there are two key concepts that she, that Gay Hendricks gave to me that really were at the perfect time because it was right as I had just started flight school. One was that we often don't allow ourselves to feel happy. We get close to happiness. We get close to the life we want. And then we start to sabotage. We start to say, no, I can't have this. And I actually had that experience in my early in my career when I first hit $100,000. And I was thinking, wow, I've got $100,000 salary. And then I realized, you know, that... I didn't feel like I deserved it. And so I sort of self-sabotaged and got out of it. And so it was not until about 10 years later that I got back to $100,000 and then kept on going because I realized that I was worthy of it and could receive that money. And so it's the same thing with something like this in the business. If you say, I don't deserve to get out of my corporate job, I can't, I can't do that by myself. I'm not the person that can do that. Then you won't. That's it. Plain and simple. Yeah. And so then the other piece of what the book offers is the four zones of performance. And they talk about the zone of uh, incompetence, zone of competence, zone of excellence, and zone of genius. And they talk about how we spend our time doing incompetence just to save a few bucks. Like, for instance, setting up our IT, IT business, when we really could call somebody who knew what they were doing, we'll sit and muddle through it for hours instead of paying somebody $100 to just do it. But 100%. then, you know, so that stuff gets a lot easier. But then when you get to the point of the zone of excellence, this is what can you do really well, and everybody values your work. And you, they just love you doing that work. But you don't love it. And that's where I was, I was in a zone of excellence. I had so many things that I could do really well, but I didn't love it. And so when I stepped back and said, how do I get to the zone of genius? And what was that? What would that look like? That was really pivotal for me to say, you know what, I'm going to hire myself and go do this business 
because I can live in the zone of genius and excel at it. And so that was a great, great book. Um, and I then the second it. one that I'm going to offer just briefly is Cheap Land, Colorado. I know a lot of people are working in Castilla because it's one of the top counties in the country that people are working in. And this is a book that tells all about people who live in Costilla County. And it's amazing because it really gives you a flavor of what the county is about and what living there is about. And you know, a lot of times we buy land that we haven't seen or bought or, or visited. And um, it's it's great to go find books that are talking about the place where, where you're working. So I think that's fantastic. I haven't even heard of this book, Cheap Land Colorado. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. It's called Cheap Land Colorado Off Gridders at America's Edge, and it's by Ted Conover. Fantastic. Great. And now the yeah. big leap I I've I've have heard of, heard of, but I've not mm-hmm. read. So I'll have to mm-hmm. have to read that. Yeah, that's that. good. That's good. So yeah. before I give my tip of the week, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Emulate Stephanie Dean and start going up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently, so you too can escape the rat race, live life on your own terms. And really, why are we doing this? I think Stephanie really kind of alluded to it, even though it wasn't, she didn't ostensibly say it. It's it's really to deepen all her relationships, especially with her husband. They can travel now. He's able to work with her. And you know, to, to be able to do that, to have that time, to have the energy, to have the resources to go and live your best life is, is absolutely amazing. Um, absolutely. And, uh, and so emulate Stephanie, take that leap, learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. I know you're worried about it. The tuition, it ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed. You're going to make back that money 180 days or less. Just show us you did the work. The landgeek.com forward slash training. All right. My tip of the week is check out and maybe wholesale by wholesale, maybe land art with Stephanie. Maybe you're not even interested in the business and you don't even want to make money, but you just want to own some land. Go to openairproperties.net. Openairproperties.net. We'll have a link to it. Stephanie, what a joy it has been to interview you for the podcast. You. you are a beam of light. I cannot yeah. wait to do a part two with you. Uh, what are your Thanks. final words of wisdom? You know, I love mentoring and I love to be mentored. And I've so appreciated this mentoring opportunity that has come through the Land Geek and through your business. I think you're amazing. And I think that the coaches are amazing and that's so great. And I'm planning to pay it forward. And I hope everybody else will just Dive in and do it. It's just such a great business and such a great community. Thank you, Stephanie. I I appreciate it. And uh, look, if you're getting value from this podcast, do us a little favor, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a copy of Dirt Rich for free, which is how Stephanie got started. All right. right. Are we going to do this together? Let's do it. One, two, three. Let Let freedom freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.